Well, I think the demise of marriage and long-term relationships, what that means is with relationships, a bit like when you watch a movie and the whole movie can be great, but if the ending is shit, we'll say movies are shit, that movie was awful. Similarly, if the ending is fantastic, you'll say that whole movie was great. Usually the people pushing this narrative have just come out of a negative relationship. So they define the entire course of love and the entire course of relationships by their particular ending. And if the ending was terrible, love is terrible and they label it like that. And they also like to run with the narrative that my ex is a narcissist is their favorite phrase on the planet at the moment what that does is kind of devoid us of the responsibility in causing that toxicity blame it on someone else and then blame love as a separate entity as a cause for our pain when really it's our behaviors so the love isn't toxic it's how we behave in love and how we behave when vulnerable that creates toxicity but it's easier to just say that love is this really dangerous emotion when really it's our poor decision making or our behaviors that cause love to be toxic and I, 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 do, I do think there is uh, you know there is a lot to be gained from convincing people that love is toxic and you don't need it because independence breeds more customers whether it's on social media whether it's on porn sites whether it's on cosmetic surgery independence creates customers so I think that it makes total sense from a marketing perspective to just breed the idea that love is no longer necessary I saw a lot of interviews from the star of Snow White where she was almost making digs at what is actually quite a sweet fairy tale but but trying to make it into digs and I just thought um, I'm guessing the narrative of seeing love as weak is being propagated in the culture today love is seen as suffering and here's the thing there's a big difference between uh, pain and suffering like pain is just things that happen in our life like let's say the person you love passes away or you have you can't have a baby that's pain Uh, but suffering is the emotional consequences of our poor decision making now if you feel like love is suffering for you have a look at your decision making if you're becoming weak but if you choose wisely be you won't see it as being weak you'll see it as being uh, com- compatible and you'll see it as being uh, compromising but if, and if you're becoming subservient uh, if you choose the right person you won't see it as a form of abuse but if you're making poor decisions of course love is going to be a form of suffering but suffering is a reminder that you made wrong choices when you feel like you can't access something the best and quickest way to defend your ego is to pretend you don't want it so to when you feel like you're not worthy of love and which I really think is a a, a, a manifestation of low self-esteem when you feel like you're not worthy of love the quickest and easiest way to feel worthy is to pretend love is terrible pretend love is toxic and I see this a lot in red pill men and really high like a proud feminist both cohorts tend to be people who personally probably believe that they're not desirable to the opposite gender so the only way to get rid of that feeling of uh, like being undesired is to pretend you don't desire the opposite gender so I see it both and they're almost a perfect match for each other that blue haired you know uh, feminist and that red pill guy they're almost a perfect match because they both almost have the same pathologies when it comes to their understanding of love so they should get together (laughs) yeah (laughs) human beings are designed with the potential to love and nurture one another and whenever we cap our potential whether that's through our, like we cap our potential physically emotionally psychologically anything that involves capping our potential will lead to a slow and steady depression that will signal to yourself that you're not fulfilling your potential and it will come out and manifest as a form of depression so when you kind of ward off love you're warding off your own full potential and therefore you will see an increase in your depression and anxiety they even find studies where women when um, they hold their partner's hand during labor they experience less pain that's how much we're designed to be in love it's actually a a pain relief it's an anti-anxiety they found loads of studies where they see uh people that you know sleep with lots of people in a communion they sleep better they don't have any like micro awakenings in the night so we're our body craves it whether you psychologically convince yourself you don't want it your body will still speak to you and tell you that you need it so unfortunately it doesn't work